Hey there guys, today we're taking a look at Insurgency Sandstorm running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5600H. Now you're currently looking at the game right now running at 1080p with the lowest in-game graphics settings. This is running on the B-Link SCR5 Mini PC. An absolute fantastic system that I have been enjoying a lot, and this is one of those games that really, really surprised me. We've taken a look at this game before running on the 5500U, but this is the best experience that I've gotten in this game with an iGPU, hands down. Back when I took a look at this game about a year ago, running on the 5500U, the level of performance that we got was essentially half of what we're getting here with the exact same settings. I was also running it at the lowest in-game graphics settings at the full 1080p resolution, and we were getting abysmal 1% lows and a abysmal averages. With the 5600H, we are looking at pretty much getting a 60 FPS average a lot of the time. Usually, most of the time, it actually ends up being in the 50s, depending on the map and specifically what you're doing, but it can be anywhere between a 50 FPS to 60 FPS average with 1% lows almost always consistently being in the 40 range. And what this means is this is a fantastic gaming experience in comparison to where we were at before with the 5500U. Now, obviously, this is a more powerful chip but not by a significant margin. It's the same iGPU, though we do have a noticeably more powerful CPU, but we also have the improved DX11 drivers from AMD, which weren't out at the time that I did the testing. And this really just feels like a completely different experience. I was kind of expecting to jump in here and get a pretty brutal experience. And instead I got something that was just remarkable. This was the most ideal situation. This runs absolutely beautifully. It feels absolutely fantastic to play. And look at those frame time charts. There are no sudden spikes. There aren't anything crazy going on there. There are the occasional spikes, but they are literally so small you can't even really see them that detailed in that chart. That means that this is a fantastic experience for the most part. And I really love playing this game. It's one of those games that, to me, I really enjoy jumping in and playing with some friends. It just is such a fantastic experience. Right now, what you're looking at is the survival co-op mode, where you're essentially just playing a survival mode against AI, where you just start off with a pistol and you need to go go out there and capture points and boxes will appear where you can get one random weapon. Now you could choose to pick up the weapon or not depending on what it is, but you are not getting anything else. There's no rerolls or anything like that. Whatever it gives you is what you get and it is a random weapon with a random set of attachments. And in general, it is such a fun experience because sometimes you will get some abysmal weapons and you just have to try to survive like that. And you can get to the next objective and get another box. But when you do that, the weapon might be worse than what you have right now, but you're not getting any more ammo. So if you burnt through your ammo on the previous weapon, you're pretty much put into a position where you're either going to have to use your pistol or you're going to be in a really, really tough spot. And in general, I had an absolute blast playing like this. When I played it on the 5500U, it was such a chore. I could not wait to stop playing. When I was playing on here, it didn't really matter. I actually played multiple matches and was having a fantastic time just listening to podcasts while playing. That is pretty much the perfect gaming experience because that is exactly what I would be doing if I wasn't playing with some friends or anything like that. So what this means is that the system itself is not holding you back from playing. And luckily, we also have the textures set to their maximum, so everything looks perfectly fine. Yeah, there are certain effects and things like that missing, but visually speaking, the game still looks really decent, and the overall level of performance is just remarkable. Of course, we can try to improve the performance that we're getting here, and the way we can do that is by dropping the resolution down from 1080p down to 900p and see what that does to the overall experience. And this was a another completely welcome surprise. We're just going down to 900p meant that our 1% lows were now comfortably above 60 and our averages were almost at 100 FPS. A drop in resolution pretty much meant that we were now getting a high refresh rate gaming experience pretty much across the board. You only sacrifice a little bit in terms of resolution and you get this massive, massive bump in performance. Now the experience of playing this game at the full 1080p resolution was perfectly fine for me and I pretty much would not have ever adjusted down to this. If I was just looking to play this game and I just jumped in, I would never would have felt the need to adjust the graphic settings or adjust the resolution or anything like that. But trying this out at 900p really, really impressed me. This was a fantastic showing. I had an absolute blast playing like this and I felt like the drop in resolution didn't really do anything to affect the overall experience. The enemies were still very detailed and easy to see, even at a distance. I would imagine that maybe in nighttime maps, it might be a little bit more difficult 
to see them, but I think that would be the case even at the full 1080p resolution. And in general, the bump in FPS felt extremely, extremely nice. Overall, it was a really great result. I had such a blast playing this. It's really a game that I think you would have a lot of fun playing if you were playing with some friends. If you're into a little bit more of a, a tactical first person shooter, not really an arcadey one, there is a lot of fun to be had here. I would definitely consider picking this game up if you haven't already, especially if you and your friends are looking for a game that you guys can play co-op together. You can pretty much just load into a server with as many friends of yours as you want and have an absolute blast. I've been a big fan of the Insurgency franchise since the first game, which unfortunately has been such a hidden gem because not a lot of people play it. And that breaks my heart because I love the game so much. I love Source Engine games in general because the Source Engine just in general runs really, really smooth and you have a massive modding community for the original Insurgency. And in a lot of ways, I still love it more than I do Insurgency Sandstorm. I really was not a fan of Sandstorm when it first launched, but it has gotten patched enough that the game is just overall better. It performs significantly better. And I am genuinely shocked that we're getting this good of a result without a graphics card. With just integrated graphics, we are getting this good performance at the full 1080p resolution and at 900p. The B-Link SCR5 mini PC really continues to just amaze me with the level of performance that you can get out of it. And it is currently hands down the most powerful mini PC for the dollar. To get any kind of meaningful improvement over this, you're looking at spending a lot of the times double what it currently sells for on Amazon. And any system that is below its price point of around $350, it usually fluctuates anywhere between $300 to $350. There's just nothing that competes with it anywhere near this, anywhere below this. And everything above it is just so grossly expensive that you're looking at spending a lot of the times double. So it really has just carved a really nice niche in its market where at the price point that you're at, it's hard to even piece together a dedicated gaming system. You're not really going to be piecing together a desktop at that price point without going into the used market and there are a lot of issues that come with that especially after such a large mining boom where you don't know what kind of conditions your graphics card has been through if you go through the used market you might end up buying a graphics card that was treated so poorly that it might end up dying on you within a year or two now i don't want to fear monger or anything like that because it really is a luck of the draw you might get a graphics card from a miner that was treated perfectly fine and it's going to last you for years and years or you're going to get one that is an absolute disaster and it could just end up dying on you immediately. That's kind of the gamble that you take with the used market. In general, though, it's hard to beat this mini PC at the price point that it's at. So if you're interested in picking it up, check out the Amazon affiliate link down below. It would help support the channel directly. As you can see, the results that I'm showing you here are legit. It is one of those things where the system itself does perform really well on a large assortment of games. So if you're interested in that, check those links out. Be sure to subscribe. I will catch you in the next one.